Hey guys, welcome to Web World Tech. My name is Amit Kumar, and I have been working uh, in this uh, browser-based development from past nine years, roughly, uh, probably a, uh, a bit more. And there are some very important learnings which I would like to share with you guys, which might be very useful for uh, for you. So in today's topic, uh, what we would be discussing is why is our web applications behave differently when you go to a similar browser but different kind of devices? And what what is the difference between the screen refresh rate resolution and maybe the processor speed? Does it really matters uh, in the browser world? And also why why it behave differently? Obviously, because in different uh, in uh, different browsers. So we'll look into all these aspects in this way discussion. So as we were seeing that nowadays the websites are no more no more static as it used to be earlier ten years or fifteen years back. Uh, it it has become it has evolved till the extent that a lot of things like almost everything is very much dynamic in nature and we can perform. There are companies out who are trying to do a complete set of transactions uh, throughout in a browser world. It is very important for SEO perspective, and so it it has become very much dynamic. So, and the important part here to note is like it is not restricted to one particular type of OS or device or anything as such. So it can work on a, a, a feature phone which is running on a Kai OS, or it can run on a, a uh, high-end smartphone, iOS system, MacBook, or a tablet, anything as such. So internet slowly and gradually is has become more and more accessible to a large set of audience. In current world, uh, okay, let's take a step back. So as we were discussing, are all these devices same in any aspect? Obviously, we have just discussed that it's it's not. It's ideally very much different uh, uh, from device to device. Although it looks like okay, I'm uh, opening the same website on a Chrome version of some 80th or 90th version or something like that. On a different device, the same website on a similar version of browser behaves very differently. There are reasons for it, and we'll look into that in details. So that's what is the topic to understand and think about and how to solve this. And first, before solving it, let's understand and let's find the problem. So as I was saying, like. Uh, uh, now, in current situation, uh, I would say roughly around 60% uh, of the um, users have came to online and there has been a revolution uh, from the time Geo smartphones has been launched. So you can say like that uh, particular phone has, uh, it's not very much updated. It works on a Kai OS, which is kind of uh, like a very older version. Uh, it has been taken out and modified from the Firefox, uh, very older version. But it is very much powerful enough to run all our latest uh, latest um, websites, which uh, which is very much dynamic in nature. So you can browse actually. So it's giving uh, the users those flexibilities that uh, from offline to online, they can come on internet and start using internet and use these websites and browsers uh, very well. So uh, that is the uh, intention. So now with this particular smartphone, it is it is very easy to manufacture, very less priced. Obviously, it is. Uh, it has started uh, penetrating the offline uh, markets, and slowly and gradually, pe people have started coming to online, and that's a very good move, right? So uh, let's understand the uh, the processing speed. So when I say the processing speed, many uh, there has been many questions floating around on my email also saying that does it really matters that. Uh, uh, processing speed of different devices. It it is it, will it affect the experience on the browser world? Uh, actually, it does. So when we understand that what kind of display uh, screen you have and what kind of processor you have, they need to be in sync. So for example, we'll go into slight more detail in the later on slides. Frames per second. That is uh, very important for any screen. Uh, to understand like for example I have 60 FPS that means 60 frames per second uh, my screen can process and th that is the refresh rate so uh, roughly for per frame I'll have 16.6 .6 milliseconds or something like that but at the same time if my processor it's not capable enough to give me or provide me that kind of uh, those frames uh, or help me in preparing those uh, those frames then it is not in sync or obviously it will be not a good experience like a if user is scrolling or trying to watch a video or trying to interact with the browser, uh, with the website, obviously it will find kind of a lag in between or kind of it will get stuck. 
so there can be these situations which is happening and de definitely uh, the experience will be much better if you go to some some uh, uh, later latest version of phones like it can be in samsung iphones anything like that now what is fps so fps uh, you can in a nutshell try to understand that number of frames the screen can process per second is called uh, is, is called as fps frames per second okay so uh, now it's very important for us to understand that what is the bare minimum fps that a device should have in order to uh, like what to say the human brain can understand and feel it uh, like as a good user experience so that uh, with this study it, it it has came out that 60 frames per second uh, is a very uh, like it's a benchmark kind of that gives a smoother experience to the user and anything beyond that obviously it's like a kind of a delightful so somewhere around 75 fps is something is something which which is very good uh, like it in a decent manner and nowadays the uh, nowadays you can see the devices uh, the devices like uh, iphone or mac or uh, like latest version of samsung devices all those things they have reached up to 140 uh, refresh rate or something like that now these are different set of devices obviously we have been discussing throughout the video currently uh, that uh, like uh, processing speed different refresh rate uh fps and all that so now coming to the uh, uh important point here then when i'm saying fps fps is like why is it so important for, for us to focus on the browser world why is it really needed so the answer is yes the thing is like so basically per frames which is getting created in the browser by main thread we'll talk about the main thread also later on in if it is uh, 60 fps you have the refresh rate currently on your screen that is 16.67 milliseconds you have uh, the browser main thread has to prepare that particular frame and while preparing that particular frame it has to do certain steps those steps are somewhere uh, like it will discuss that also in detail but it is uh, it can be from creating a dom to create a layout to paint css arm combine then everything and then present to you a one particular frame that is one particular step and this complete set of items needs to be done within 16.67 milliseconds which is very less time and the problem here is as the more and more screens uh, like uh, this thing the websites are becoming dynamic the more and more javascript the uh, has is being downloaded to make these things more interactive automatically more work has to be done by our javascript main thread why it is why are we highlighting on the main thread is like we'll discuss a bit in detail uh, in further on uh, but in a nutshell the reason here is like main thread is the main person who is responsible for doing all this job we don't have a multitasking uh, in in our uh, browser world directly right in earlier days it was kind of um, you have one one thread definitely per window so but now things have been very much enhanced uh, but still it is main thread itself who is going to perform all these extra activities with all the dynamic nature and everything there is a uh, not a workaround there are certain options to solve uh, like provide another uh, second set of thread but uh, still the majority of the executions are being done on the main thread itself so now coming to the next point that is 120 part like uh, when i'm saying like a uh, screen has become advanced like if i see iphone latest versions or something so obviously num uh, the processing speed uh, and has been increased and definitely the refresh rate has been increased in the screen automatically it becomes like i have roughly around 8 point something milliseconds uh, to create one frame that is very very less time and my um, uh, user uh, the site to uh, react based on the user interaction uh, all those things needs to be checked and needs to be tested uh, with this kind of uh, these uh, keeping these logics inside in, in mind while we are testing our website in different kind of devices now the important part here for us to understand what is the difference uh, in between refresh rate and a frame rate this is, uh, slide is intentionally kept because there has been a like a uh, misconception floating around uh, the floors so, uh, so that are the same so uh, ideally they are not but it does the same job almost uh, like with in a different perspective uh, and they need to be in sync with each other so refresh rate is di is determined by uh, display while frame rate is determined by the computer's processor i think this one sentence you can uh, clearly understand that they are slightly different 
but they kind of help each other in performing they need to be in sync so to fully take advantage of monitors high refresh rate the, uh, it's important that cpus and the gpus are able to produce enough frames per second so that uh, on the other side a high performance graphics card would only uh, go waste if the, it is paired with a slower refresh rate monitor obviously because you, your monitor is not having the capacity to consume those many uh, like frames per second and refresh the screen like that so that is an important perspective uh, i hope this would have cleared out that particular thought yeah now uh, we have been discussing about the browser main say browser life cycle so this is the uh, slide which is kept for that uh, so there are five major areas uh, uh, that you need to know about uh, to be mindful of when you work uh, with the main thread so the first thing here is uh, like events so it's like you can see on load on scroll a browser on browser user does a lot of things so there are different scenarios on that but uh, nowadays as as we have been discussing that it has become very much uh, dynamic it's not static as 10 10 years back so the thing is like so what happens is there can be events attached to those listeners for example on scroll some some javascript can be attached on top of it to perform some work so uh, if we talk about this particular use case, then again, the styles needs to recalculate uh, based on what uh, the script has been written, maybe to download another set of uh, UI component, or maybe to call an API and get set another set of data and create the uh, update the DOM, play with the DOM elements, uh, give some other information to user. So while you are doing this, styles needs to be calculated, layouts needs to be created, painting needs to be done for the uh, latest data and latest action which has been performed, and finally compose it create that one frame and present it to you to the user so these many set of uh, steps needs to be performed per frame by the uh, our uh, respected main thread so that's what uh, we, in browser world we respect main thread a lot now coming to the next point here uh, like we have been discussing about this guy main thread right so somehow uh, like uh, there are a lot of uh, information over the internet which tells that okay how uh, what is main thread like and uh, why is it being kind of over over uh, uh, exploited these days uh, so the thing is it is very important for us to uh, take care of main thread we should not over uh, utilize it uh, when it is not needed again be, based on the uh, data which we have discussed till now because it has a limited time to create that frame to give a better users experience to the users so this is uh, very important for us to Keep in mind while you're writing the code, how much of used code, how much of unused code you're throwing it to the browser. Usually if we solve that one itself, uh, ideally and create a mini chunks of our browser through, by using any uh, tools like Webpack or anything as a roll up or anything. I think Webpack is a good one. I like that. So uh, something, uh, those things uh, will help us to reduce the over uh, pressure on the main thread and try to utilize web workers. Web workers is a, it's not a new concept altogether, but uh, it has been there from long, long time. But kind of, uh, I uh, somehow feel it's not being used till that extent where its power is. And uh, it, it gives us a flexibility to execute some of the items on another thread and try to give the output and uh, to the main thread so that main th thread can take, uh, take the execution, take up the execution from there onwards and try to update the DOM. Something like that can be done but it's not being done, unfortunately, a lot. I have seen in a lot of dynamic sites, but uh, yes, the things uh, are changing slowly. Main thread overloaded. Based on the data points, which we have discussed till now, advanced screens, uh, refresh rate, sites being dynamic, more unused code, and definitely our respected feature phones. The thing uh, uh, with feature phones is, is I, I like that fact that it is giving the opportunity to a lot of users to come online and uh, all that. And it, but it becomes more and more challenging for uh, the developers to uh, make sure their website works in those phones also because obviously that's the next set of big big chunk of users which is coming online and somehow we have to be uh, capable and the websites have to has to be capable enough cater to these these customers also so yeah that's an important fact about the feature phones that uh, another question is like after all this discussion can we solve this problem yes definitely we can solve this problem the thing here is like as i mentioned one of the approach uh, is using web workers uh, so that your site is interactive don't block your main thread and uh, for longer time 
and don't uh, let your site getting stuck. Uh, you can uh, see how your uh, set of used code and unused code are being followed up. There are a lot of uh, such articles which I've shared on uh, Medium blogs and Twitters. I'll share the link uh, with you guys. Please check on that. But for this particular uh, discussion, I would say uh, use your uh, try all the ways to make uh, make sure your uh, main thread is not over uh, utilized or not over pressured. You can use Web Worker or you can uh, define that what kind of uh, code needs to be executed on load or what kind of code needs to be executed on demand. Uh, try to reduce unused code per bundle something like that. And there are a lot of other ways to optimize. Uh, definitely, uh, we have to take care of uh, the concept of core web vitals also in, in, in on top of it. At the end, I would say there is one important factor uh, is to uh, like understand about network. All these things are tied up to network. If your network is slow, again, things will change. So uh, think of network based rendering of your uh, websites also how much of data, uh, how much of uh, rendering uh, you are doing, how much of um, JavaScript you are throwing uh, in a slow network to, uh, to that particular user and uh, how much uh, your uh, main thread is, is going to work. All those things needs to be taken care to optimize this full experience for user. Follow me on, on this two links, you'll get more details here. Thank you.